All right, ladies and gentlemen, funny story. Now I'm live, and I was just talking to myself for the last five minutes. Yes, so hopefully those of you out there waiting were patient. I am now live to the public. So let me get, yep, here we go. All right, good evening, everyone. Hold on, let me shut the blinds really quick. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. That is hilarious. So Jackie was, uh, maybe you saw my new profile pic. Jackie was messing with it last night, trying to get the cool Matrix move Valerie and I did way back in the day. And she set my personal profile to only me. So I've been talking to myself the last five minutes. So let me recap what is now being shared public and not just to me because I'm like, hey, look, I can see me. But if you set your Facebook profile to only you, you can go live and talk to yourself. It's an amazing thing. Good evening. Welcome to Joel's College of Swing Era Knowledge live to the World Wide Web on Facebook. And tonight we are focusing on our Balboa topic. And what I was uh, talking about before we realized I was just talking to myself was I've been trying to come up with ideas for the College of Swing Era Knowledge. And in a nutshell, I've been thinking about things that I wish still existed, things that were still taught, things that were still covered, things that I don't see that often out there, whether it's teaching wise or maybe social dancing or, or whatnot. So tonight, our topic is Balboa. And the two focus areas that we're going to work on is hand connection and a 360 degree come around. And I bring this up because um, without a doubt, towards the tail end of my mega traveling teaching years. Uh, my wave was basically 2002 to 2010 ish. I've traveled here and there since 2010 till current, but nothing like, like I used to. Um, and so in doing, this has come up in private lessons. This has come up in group lessons. I remember doing this first, uh, this focus area, um, actually, I think it was in Italy. And I believe I was teaching with uh, Dominique um, or it could have been Jessica. Oh my goodness. I've talked with so many wonderful, uh, partners and followers over the years, but, um, I'm pretty sure I'm remembering this, this hotel room in Italy and us going through this specific lesson, which is the hand connection for Balboa. And, uh, let me preface this with another instance, a private lesson. I'm not going to say the country I was in. Uh, starts with an A, ends in an A, <laughs> and uh, it's down under. But anyway, I'm in this private lesson, and I go to connect, and I'm talking to the couple about the what I what I call the top line, what happens from the waist up. And I go to connect with this this person, and she literally says like, "Ow," oh. and and it kind of shocked me a little bit. And I said, "What just happened?" She's like, "You're you're squeezing my hand," and I, we had to have a discussion uh, because then I took her partner and I was like, hey, I just, I just need you to, to feel this. And, and the, the leader like got connected with me and I was like, do you, do you feel like I'm squeezing your hand? And, and he said no. And then I went back to the follower, like trying to explain definitions of squeeze versus connection. And in that discussion, I completely understood where she was coming from because she informed me that what was taught to her and what was being told to do socially in class, et cetera, was to have absolutely no connection in her right hand at all. The, the right hand was basically to be non-existent, use it as little as possible, no connection. No, and that, and that makes sense because if I'm going to take my right hand and have absolute, like no connection, no nothing. And then somebody comes in and tries to connect that, that could feel, or be interpreted as a squeeze, even though I'm just trying to connect. And so I used this same analogy in that private lesson as I did in this class in Italy. This is many, many years ago. If you've ever uh, taken a class with me, you might have 
had this experience. And so for you teachers out there, take a bottle. And, and if you saw my promos, hopefully you, you have a bottle ready, glass, um, mug, it doesn't matter. Get something that you, you can hold on to. And so the goal is, so right now we're gonna pretend we're in this huge group of, of Balboa students and all the leaders are gonna grab this with their left hand and all the followers are gonna grab it with their right hand. And now we're just gonna pretend we're in this big, huge classroom settings, but you're just gonna pass it from the leader to the follower, to the leader, to the follower. And let's just keep doing that. Let's pretend we have this huge circle of people that are in this lesson. Now keep passing this bottle back and forth. Now mine is filled like maybe not even a quarter of the way. If your bottle is filled up more, it's gonna be a little bit heavier. If it's not filled up at all, it might be lighter. But notice, as you're passing the bottle or whatever you have in your hands, I don't care if it's your cell phone, a cup, a glass, a plant, a baby, a dog, you're passing it back and forth. And in order to pass it back and forth, you've got to engage with it. You've got to connect with it. Now, if I think about that lesson that this, this follower had, and if I think about, well, I, I've been told, I've been taught, to, to not engage with this hand. It should be non-existent, nothing there. Okay, so let's go ahead and pass the bottle to that follower. Oh, hold on, let me, let me try that again. Remember, I was taught not to engage. Don't do anything with this hand. It's not supposed to, oh, hold on. I'm sorry, let me try him one more time. It's not gonna happen. It is gonna be absolutely impossible for you to engage with your partner if your mindset going into a Balboa connection is there should be as little or no connection in that hand as possible. I'm gonna say it again. It's gonna be impossible to have any connection. So go back to actually passing it back and forth. Okay, now let's focus on everybody can be a leader for a second. Take that bottle and put it in your left hand. And I'm gonna turn as if I'm dancing with somebody and notice I'm engaged with this bottle. Notice I do not have to crush this bottle and that would be a squeeze, see that? That's a squeeze. <laughs> Hold on, let me, I wish I had like a thinner bottle. I got one of those like thicker kind of bottles, no big deal, but you get my, you get the picture. Now I'm holding the bottle here, right? And now if I take this bottle out and I take my right hand and I place it into the connection, that's basically what happens, right? So if you take your left hand, put it out in front of you, point your thumb toward you, and now take your, actually, Jackie, let me do this real quick just to make sure. Yes, okay, <laughs> I just had to make sure. Now take your left hand, point your thumb at you, take your right hand, come in to engage, and your right thumb should be the one in front, okay? And now be there. And now, however you are holding that bottle, and hopefully you weren't holding a really heavy bottle, but now engage, yeah? Engage, now, now let's follower focus. Boop. Now I'm following my right hand. I'm actually, remember, I don't, I don't wanna be that follower that was told nothing, nothing in that hand, don't engage it. Hold on, let me try again, because remember I was told don't engage. Man, I, I don't know what I'm, forget that lesson. I'm sorry, I'm gonna cut to the chase. Whoever was giving that out there, I'm going to say, I rarely say, like, never do this. Don't ever do this. Because if you don't engage, you don't engage. So take your right hand, hold the bottle. I'm not squeezing it. I don't have to squeeze it, but I have to engage. I have to hold it. Okay, I'm holding this bottle. This is my right hand. I'm holding this bottle. I don't have to squeeze. I'm not intense. My shoulders are relaxed. I have engagement in my arm, just enough to have this good connection. Yeah, and now, I mean, and now you could even play with like taking both hands. Now, both hands hold the bottle, right? You don't have to squeeze that much and then just go back and forth. There's my left hand, my leader hand. There's my right hand, my follower hand. Go back and forth. It's equal and it's no squeezy squeezy like I was told, right? Remember, I wanna go back to my private lesson where the follower said, ah, you're, you're squeezing my hand. No, no, I'm not. I'm doing, I was doing exactly this. But again, if you're gonna be non-existent, that could be interpreted as a squeeze. Now, take the bottle out of the picture. Left hand in front, right hand right there. Now engage and equally engage. And what I mean by that is right now, you're playing both leader and follower. 
okay? And so when I engage as a leader, when I engage as a follower, there is a, dare I say, beautiful connection here. It's not stressful. It's not squeezing. It doesn't look um, funky in any way. It doesn't feel funky in any way, but it has this beautiful energy. And you can, again, do this yourself. This simulates the hand position that I'm hoping that you will continue with from this night forward in your Balboa. Okay, that's it. That's what I wish still existed. Now, specifically for the followers, I want you to notice my right hand, that's this hand. <laughs> notice that I'm engaged. I'm engaged with my hands here. Uh, my, my fingers, every finger is engaged as I'm quote unquote holding that bottle, engage that bottle. And I'm doing the same as a leader, right? Now, if I, as a follower, I'm gonna turn this way so you can see this. If I don't engage my pinky and my index finger and the leader engages, do you see what happens to my fingers? And, and again, I'm not, I'm not squeezing, I'm trying to engage. And then you'll see, see things like this. Remember, this is the follower's hand. And I'm choosing not to engage my index finger and my pinky. And even though the leader hand is not squeezing, I'll agree, it looks like I'm squeezing this follower hand. But is this because me as the leader is squeezing or because me as the follower is not engaging? Hear that again. Is it because I'm squeezing or is it because the follower's not engaging? Now, as a follower, if I engage, when I go to connect, if I engage my pinky and my index finger when I go to connect, I am right now, and you can do this yourself, apply the same connection, apply the same, I'm going to say squeeze, but for those of you that have been listening, or you know I don't mean squeeze, the same hole that I had on the bottom. Now look, look at that beautiful line in the fingers, right? Look at that nice connection here from the side, from this side, right? There's no weird like guitar chords, no squeezy squeezy, no rock and roll hands. And that simply comes from something I call finger frame. If I dance from every fingertip to every fingertip down to my every toe and engage my body, not in a stiff, um, like intense way, but just have an, have a, an, an intention, have a, have a holding of your partner now you've got exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so for the followers, that's a big takeaway, right? Having that finger frame and engaging the pinky and the index finger. Now, the other thing that happens sometimes is a leader will come in and they'll give the follower the thumb. No. <laughs> right? Jackie's in the kitchen like, no. And so then the follower has no choice because if I come in and I connect like this, then the follower has no choice but to basically milk my thumb, right? And like have my udder. <laughs> don't give me no pop, no pop, don't give me no milk, no milk. All right, don't give me no juice, just give me some milk. Woo, 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 woo. If you have a kid, you know what I'm talking about out there. Go noodle. Anyway, leads, don't lead with your thumb. Just don't. I'm sorry, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Don't just give your follower your thumb because then she's going to, the follower is going to grab onto that thumb. So engage. Hold that bottle. Boom. Leader. Boom follower. Simulate that here. Take that into your Balboa dancing. I guarantee you it will change how everything feels in pure Bal because now the follower's right side and the leader's left side will be engaged in that connection and you're going to feel things a lot more. Not because of a squeezy thing, but just simply because of engagement. Okay, so that's the, the hand connection. That's something to play with. If you're a teacher out there, feel free to take the, bal the Balboa bottle idea. Super simple, it could be really fast in class, passing it, leaders left, followers right, throughout the whole circle. And then I've actually had people dance where the leader's holding the bottle at the top, the followers holding the bottle at the bottom. They're dancing, boom, simulating that, that connection, that feel, get rid of the bottle, go into your connection, and you're good to go. So have fun with that and, and feel, more importantly, feel what that does for your Balboa basic. All right, now we're gonna get up and move around a little bit. Thank you for that beautiful discussion on hand connection.
something that I wish still existed. Okay, and now the next one. The 360 degree come around. For those of you that know Balboa, and by the way, these shirts are available at swingdancingsandiego.com. Beautiful Balboa, and the back is super cool. I hope you can see that. It says, eventually, you'll eventually come, you'll eventually come around. Get it? And if you don't, that's okay. But those of you that know the step called the come around, you'll eventually come around to this idea of thinking. Because, again, towards the end of my mega traveling days, I noticed a lot of teachers and a lot of students, when they were dancing their Balboa, going and moving into bell swing moves like lollies or throwouts or things like that, pop turns, um, or just like the turn in general on its own, doing um, a half turn. And again, I asked some people about this, and I'm like, well, that's the way it was taught to me. And I actually noticed some classes. Now, this is the one, this is one where I'm not going to say it, it's wrong. I'm not going to say don't ever do this. But there is a certain energy to this dance. And so for those of you that know Balboa, we know that the basic, like one of the basics is step, step, hold, step, 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 hold, step. We know that another basic is step, step, down, step, step, down. And then I would say that the footwork for the come around is the deadly combo of the two, which is step, step, down, step, step, up. Now, as I do that step, for me, I turn my hips. But I do a step, step, down, step, step, up. Boom. And now I'm back to my basic. But notice when I did that, I turned my hips. And it's not that I had to get around on any one particular count. But I used the entire eight count to do what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, full 360. All the way back to you. Again, what I've noticed and seen is a lot of people doing one, two, three, five, six, seven, and a basic. I'll do that again. One, two, three, five, six, seven, and a basic. So again, this is one where I'm not going to say it's wrong, but energetically, if you're out there, if you've learned that the come around is this kind of little 180 degree turn or less or anything like that, for me, over the years of teaching Balboa, you're going to lose what I call the energy of the dance. And let's say that again. If you're only doing like a 180 come around or focusing on just that, what I'm going to call a half turn, you're going to lose the energy that makes this dance the dance. Maxi would always tell us it's all about a circle. He never said it was all about a semicircle. It's all about a half circle. This dance is about a circle, and a circle is a completion. So I start this motion, and I complete this motion and get back to where I was. Now, if you're out there, and you're watching this, and you don't have knowledge of the come around and the footwork and things like that, um, hit me up in a private message or something, or get with your local Balboa teachers on Zoom or something, and learn that footwork, because that is a step that you have to master whether you're leading or following. If you're following, you want to have a full understanding of the fact that you have a basic step and that you're going to be led to pivot on your right foot and come all the way back around, hopefully, and get back to the basic. But again, as followers, you're, you're going to feel the rotation that the leader gives you. So if the leader gives you a semicircle, a half circle, that's what you're going to get, right? And so leaders especially, it's important for you to understand the rhythm of this footwork, step, step, down, step, step, up, step, and on the down, because of the rotation in our hips, we start that rotation. If I rotate my hips really small, focusing on only a half turn, the energy is going to be, hmm. but if I think about turning my hips, getting some good energy, getting back to the wall that I'm facing, the camera that I'm facing, the direction that I'm facing, then I put a little, hmm, it might come around. Not that it has to be this crazy like whirlwind of going around, but it has a nice energy. Here's how you test that energy. And now for the sake of the lesson I was doing before, I'm going to actually dance with my bottle. And now go ahead and find a pillow, a cat, a dog, a child, and you're going to connect. Now you're going to be a leader right now. So you're going to take your right forearm 
and you're going to connect with that pillow. I'm going to dance with my bottle to simulate that beautiful hand connection, and my wonderful follower is engaged with me. Okay, so now watch. If I get good rotation, all right, and then usually the release of a lolly, a throw out, a pop turn, usually the release is around four. There's a sweet spot for it. And if I get that good release, watch what's going to happen. I come around, ooh, ooh, pop. That pillow went straight to you. Watch in this angle so you can see this. So I'm facing this wall. Okay, and if I let go of that pillow at the right time, focusing on my 360 degree come around, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, where that pillow go? Out this way. Now it went that way not because I threw it, but because of the energy of my rotation. Yeah, and it went away from me. Okay, watch this. I'm going to do this again. But this time I'm only going to turn around 180. So I'm going to go. One, two, three, five, six, seven. Did, did you see what happened to that pillow? It, it just dropped right to my feet. We do that again. Actually, it doesn't even matter the speed. I'm going to speed up my tempo. I'm going to do a 180 half turn come around. Watch what happens. Five, six, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, five, six, seven. It just drops right there. The energy, because of my lack of rotation is just <laughs> okay now because I want to simulate the same direction so I'm going to start that same tempo here now remember I'm going to work for a full 360 come around so I'm going to get back to this one watch what happens to this pillow I'm going to let go of it at the same time but I'm going to think about my nice rotation five six five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven now the pillow moves away from me and all I did was release my arm like I did in the half come around or the 180 degree come around. But you notice what happened to the pillow. The pillow has some energy, some energy going away. Maxie said this is all about a circle. And then so a circle has what? Engineers out there, centripetal force, right? But you, you've got to have a circular energy to create that. If you don't have an energy, you don't have that force. And, and, I'm, and I'm using force as, a, as an engineering vector kind of way, not forceful. I'm not shoving, I'm not throwing, but there's an energy in my step called the come around. There's an energy in my body. It transfers into this beautiful connection that's still in my hand. We already talked about that. And the follower's momentum floats away into that connected hand. Now guess what? We bring this full circle. If you are engaged the entire time. You don't have to do anything to this. When you release your follower, release that energy, the follower floats away because of the centripetal circular energy that we've created in our hips, in our step, and the follower floats away. And what? We get out to a beautiful stretch, and we are engaged already in the bottle. And so, yeah, it, it increases a little bit. So we'll go back to this again. So put your left hand in front of you. Put your right hand so that your right thumb is closer to you. Engage with that bottle of connection. And now just bring your elbows apart a little bit. And then come back in. So now when you do a throw out and you go out to that stretch, there's a stretch. Now if we both are engaged in our fingers and thinking about a bottle when we stretch away, it increases a little bit, but no one has to think about when am I supposed to engage or not engage. Again, I'm going to go back to the follower that told me, I was told not to do anything with this arm. It should be non-existent. Okay, so then what about lollies? What about throwouts? What about those moves where I'm going to send you out and I need that arm to connect? Is the rule still in effect? Are you not supposed to connect at all when I send you in a throw out? So then this hand, your hand is not supposed to engage, so it's just supposed to somehow stay connected by magnets or something to my hands? You see, like, I don't get the theory on that one. I'm going to go back to, like, please stop doing that. Please stop disengaging your hand connection because somebody told you to 
or because somebody said don't have any connection in your right arm or your right hand followers or for leaders like not having a connection there because if it's engaged when you go out it's already engaged you're ready to go leaders if you give your follower the thumb right and the follower is connected with that thumb when you go out to the throw out what does the follower have to hang on to with that stretch especially if it's a ripped war and fast song and you get some good energy and there's a good stretch there, not because, again, because of yanking or throwing or anything, just because there's a good energy in the song, they're going to squeeze onto your thumb because there's nothing else to connect to. That's weird. Stop. Don't do it anymore. Engage the bottle, boom, and you're good to go. Now, this brings up the next point. So as you're doing this nice 360, you saw the pillow, you can practice yourself, boom, being a leader, boom, releasing that energy, see where that... That pillow goes, you're engaged in the bottle. And then guess what happens when you let go of the bottle? The bottle drops. I'm engaged with the bottle, I let it go. Notice, I don't have to throw it to make it go somewhere. I don't have to throw it up, down, anywhere. I just let it go and the bottle disengages. And so if we both have that analogy and the let go happens and the bottle disengages, you get out to that throw and then what do I do to create that energy coming back? I release the bottle, I release that energy, and the follower comes back. I never have to yank, I never have to pull, I never have to squeeze if, 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 if my partner has the same engagement with me. Because the energy is in the bottle, the bottle gets released, and then the energy goes the other direction when it comes to physics. So the, I like this little combo that I decided to work on today because it does come full circle with the connection in the hand, with the rotation with the pillow and the momentum of like a basic throwout. A couple weeks ago, I did do, um, I think a session on understanding the throwout through solo movement. I did do the pillow analogy. I don't remember doing the bottle, but this brings everything full circle if you can find that on our, our YouTube channel. So um, again, my point in bringing these things up, especially for you teachers out there, if you teach Balboa, think about what you're doing. Think about the connection that you have with your partner in the dance. Don't just teach steps for the sake of teaching steps. Have an understanding of how these steps work, right? How the step works with the numbers, how the step works with the rhythms, how the step works mechanically, physically, and with the connection of the dance. Because if you don't have connection, then everything's gonna be based on choreography. Everything's gonna be based on making assumptions that you know what's going on and not truly having that connection with your partner. So ladies and gentlemen, hopefully when you get back to dancing your Balboa live in person with other people, you will remember this bottle analogy and have this beautiful connection with your partners. Leaders, hopefully you will remember the idea of a full 360 degree come around, which will really make a difference in how you send your partner out, how you pick your partners up, and you'll have this beautiful flow of energy um, in the dance that I really think makes Balboa Balboa. Not that the other dances don't have a beautiful flow of energy, but there's something in particular about the Balboa, and as Maxi told us, it's all about that circle. So work that circle. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes tonight's College of Swing Era Knowledge Balboa edition. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, please consider donating. I know there's a lot of stuff going out there. I have a feeling people are really getting tired of the online stuff. I know it's a lot more discussion versus like dancing and doing things with people, but it's a lot of exercises that I hope help you as teachers, help you as dancers. And at the end of the day, I mean, I know, um, like I know my stuff's getting a lot of views, but I, I say this, I've said this in the past, even a dollar. Even a dollar makes a huge difference because I can't keep doing this with uh, nothing else coming in. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. It's really helpful if you donate a buck or two. Think about any one-hour class or seminar you might take. What's the price of that? Cut it in half. Send that my way if you can. I hope this brought you a little bit of joy tonight. I hope it brought you some swing era knowledge and that you're able to take this and run with it. Balboa, connect with that bottle. 360 degree come arounds. I really wish those still existed and I hope you continue to have that happen in your Balboa. As always, I'm Joel. This is the College of Swing Era Knowledge. Night, night. Crazy about you. Thank you.